14 amazing spacesuit designs. Number 14, the Apollo Skylab A7L. The Skylab A7L was the main pressure suit that was designed for Project Apollo. This happens to be the seventh Apollo spacesuit that NASA has used, and it was designed and built by ILC Dover. The suit was designed to be fire resistant after the deadly disaster of the Apollo 1 fire. The A7L was designed as a one-piece suit that comes with integrated intravehicular cover, thermo micro meteoroid garment, torso limb suit assembly, liquid cooling garment, and constant wear garment. Number 13, the Mark 1 ELSS. The Mark 1 ELSS, ELSS standing for Extra Vehicular and Lunar Surface Suit, was constructed and tested by the Air Force during the late 1950s. The design of the suit was created by the Lytton Industries with the concept of constant volume. Testing for the suit reached a staggering length of over 600 hours in total between the years of 1958 and 1959. This suit also came with a wider range of motion. This design helped lead to more improved costumes in the RX series that would be used by NASA during the Apollo program. Number 12, the Yastre. This was a Russian spacesuit that was specifically built for EVA and early Soyuz space vehicle missions. Designed by the Zvezda company back in 1966, it was created with pulley and line systems that would help to regulate movement, but ended up making the design more rigid and was even heavier than the previous suit before it. This also gave the suit very little freedom of movement and was only used once on the Soyuz 4 and 5 docking and crew exchange. Number 11, the Orlin spacesuit. These types of spacesuits have been used for spacewalks in not only the Russian space program, but in other agencies as well, including NASA and the Chinese space program. It's a collection of stiff one-piece spacesuits that were designed and developed by NPP Zvezda. The suit has gone through many revisions and styles. The most current model is the Orlan MK, which got its chance to be tested during a spacewalk back in June of 2009. Unlike its predecessor, the suit has flexible arms, along with having a solid torso and a rear hatch entry. Number 10, the Streis. The Streis spacesuit was initially created for the Russian Buran Space Shuttle. It was made in order to help protect astronauts while they were being ejected from the spacecraft at speeds reaching up to Mach 3. The suit is made from nylon canvas that's olive colored and the inside is lined with a rubberized fabric. Other features of this suit included adjustable articulating cables fitted inside of the upper arms, detachable gloves, an attached pressurized hood, and leather palms. The suit was tested by being worn on mannequins that were on the unmanned space shuttle Buran Flight 1K1. Number 9, the Krechet 94. The Krechet 94 spacesuit was made for lunar expeditions during the Soviet manned lunar program. It was designed by NPP Zvezda, like a few other suits on this list, and the developmental prototype was known as the Krechet. The Krechet 94 was a semi stiff spacesuit that could work for 10 hours before it had to be resupplied and had an operating time of 48 hours. Key features on this include two snap down visors and a metal hula hoop ring on the back, a chest-mounted control, and an instrumental panel. However, this suit was never used in any space missions at all. Number eight, the Advanced Crew Escape Suit. The Advanced Crew Escape Suit, or ACES, was first used back in 1994 and was fully functional until the end of the shuttle program. It is made by the David Clark Company, located in Massachusetts. Each of the spacesuits is sized based on the individual, and they each have their own ventilation system. A full pressure helmet, a one-piece pressure garment assembly, and heavy black leather boots with zippers. There have been no incidents in which these suits have failed during a space mission. Number 7, the Sokol spacesuit. The Sokol is a Russian spacesuit that was worn by all the individuals who fly on the Soyuz spacecraft. It's designed as a type of rescue suit, which keeps the person inside alive in case there's ever an incident where there is an accidental depressurization of the spacecraft. First introduced in 1973, this type of suit is still being used as of 2015, and is the same type of suit that the astronauts from NASA wear during launching and landing. Weighing in at around 10 kilograms, this suit uses an open circuit life support system, although it can't be used for spacewalks or extravehicular activity. 
Number six, the Constellation Spacesuit. The design concept for the Constellation Spacesuit was made public by NASA back in June of 2008, and the manufacturers will be Oceaneering International. The Constellation Suit system is the main component of the Extra Vehicular Activity System for NASA's Space Exploring Program. It's made to increase the layout on small crew vehicles to help protect the astronauts while launching, re-entering, landing, and during extreme emergencies such as cabin depressurization. The suits would potentially be put to use in aiding the construction of an outpost on the moon. Number five, the Gemini space suit. These suits were all built by the David Clark Company, located in Massachusetts, based on the designs by NASA that were based on the X-15 high altitude pressure suit. These suits have gone through multiple redesigns throughout the ages. The G-3C and G-4C spacesuits were worn for all missions with the exception of Gemini 7. The G3C has up to six layers of nylon and Nomex. It also had detachable gloves, a full pressure helmet, and combat style boots, while the G4C had additional layers of Mylar insulation installed to control the internal temperature. Number four, the Navy Mark IV. This spacesuit was made for high altitude pressures and was constructed by the BF Goodrich Company along with the U.S. Navy. These are the suits that are to be worn for all Project Mercury space flights. It was first established during the late 1950s, and it happened to be the lightest pressure suit back in that time period. NASA chose to use these suits in order to protect the astronauts in case there was ever a sudden depressurization of the cabin. The astronauts were each given three pressure suits, one being for training, the second for the flight, and the third suit is a backup. All the suits added up together at a cost of $200,000. Number three, the iSuit. The iSuit is constructed by ILC Dover. It was created for multiple purposes, such as planetary excursions and microgravity EVA. It's considered as a pioneer in all soft suit stakes because of its joint mobility, structural loads, and its pressure and resizing capabilities. This suit is just like the EMU, except that the fiberglass upper torso has been replaced with a soft upper torso, and instead of using stainless steel, it used lightweight titanium. Another cool feature is that this suit has a life-supporting backpack attached to it. Number two, the Extra Vehicular Mobility Unit. The Extra Vehicular Mobility Unit spacesuit was first introduced way back in 1981, and the first of this type of suit made its way into space the following year. The suit is capable of providing life support, mobility, communication, and protection for the astronauts that work in the Earth's orbit. This suit was designed as a two-piece semi-rigid suit and is currently being used by the ISS. However, they will be replaced with the new Z-Series in the future. Number one, the Z-Series. Named the best invention of 2012 by Time Magazine, this series of EVA spacesuits happen to be prototypes that are currently being created by NASA's Advanced Exploration Systems Program. The Z-1 spacesuits are made up of several solid mobility elements when pressurized, but when unpressurized, the main structures are malleable fabrics. It was designed and developed by ILC Dover, just like the I-suit. The successor of the Z-1, the Z-2 suit, has improved designs to the shoulders and hips and will be designed with the ability to interface with the portable life support system.